Oh, this is not good. Final notice? Twinkie boy, Sheila, come quick. What is it, good pal? I just found this in the mailbox. It's a final notice from the bank. It says you haven't been making payments on the mortgage for this house. And if you don't do it soon, the bank will take our house. Oh boy, I've been spending all my money on dear Sheila here. She wanted a new wardrobe, and then eyelash extensions, and then fake nails, and then hair extensions. I just can't say no to my little sweetie pie. Well, you better learn how to say no to Sheila, or we won't have a place to live. Twinkie boy, Bird Ben says you have to say no to me. I don't like that. Don't worry, Apple Pie. Birdman, what should I do? I don't have any money. It's time to get a job, Twinkie Boy. A job? What's a job? A job is when you do work and someone gives you money in return. We need to pay this mortgage fast. We'll all get jobs. The restaurant down the street is hiring cooks and servers. Let's go get jobs. Twinkie boy, Birdman says we all have to get jobs, but I'm so delicate. How can I work? Don't worry, love button. It's just till we get all this sorted out. Do it for me. All right, Twinkie boy. But if one of my false nails falls off in the food, I'll be very upset. Enough out of you two. Let's go. of the jobs. You got it. Put on your aprons and hair nets and get to work. Twinkie boy, I won't look beautiful in a hair net. Don't worry, Snookums. You'll always look beautiful to me. Working is not about being beautiful. It's about serving the customer's good pizza. That's right, Birdman. Because you're so smart, I'm making you my new manager. Twinkie boy and Sheila, Make sure you do what Birdman tells you to do. Twinkie boy, Papa Pia says I have to take orders from Birdman. That's right, Sheila. That's because he's our new manager. That's right, Twinkie boy. Go find out what our patrons would like to eat. Sheila, oh, I don't know. Go get me a nice cold soda. There's no customers in this restaurant. 
Business is a little slow lately. Not to worry. Sheila and I will be the new customers you've always wanted. Good afternoon. What can I get for you today? I will have a large meat pizza with extra cheese and a liter of root beer and some breadsticks and some fries and an apple turnover and... And I will have the bird seed. Mm -hmm. Well done. With just a dash of salt. Mmm, I love salt. Ever tried it? Yes, I've tried salt, Birdman. Okay, coming right up. Where's the cook? That's your job too, Twinkie Boy, because you're so responsible. Oh, right. Hey, Betty, what are you thinking about? Oh, Freddy, you wouldn't believe what happened. I went to a racetrack with my family and I got to ride in a real stock car. That sounds amazing, Betty. How was it? It was incredible, Freddy. The engine roared like thunder and I could feel the speed as we zoomed around the track. So what did you think of it, Betty? Well, Freddy, when I was in the car, I felt like I could conquer the world. The rush of adrenaline, the wind in my hair, it was like a dream come true. And you know what I thought? I thought, I want to be a race car driver when I grow up, just like the ones I saw on the track. That's incredible, Betty. Becoming a race car driver would be an exciting and adventurous career choice. I can already imagine myself behind the wheel, racing at high speeds, competing with others, and maybe even winning championships. It's like a thrilling adventure waiting to unfold. Pursue your passion and make your dream of becoming a race car driver a reality. You never know where your journey might take you. It would be a great career. Careers? What's that? I'm trying to decide what job I want to do when I grow up. I don't really know a whole lot about that sort of thing, though. Well then, let's deep dive into various career options. Okay. Well, what are they all about, Freddy? Well, for example, there are doctors, Betty. They spend years studying and learning about the body's complex systems and functions. They help people when they're sick or hurt. Wow, so they're like the problem solvers of health? Exactly. Doctors use their knowledge and skills to diagnose illnesses and injuries. They help people when they're sick, providing treatments and guiding them on the path to recovery. Like guardians of well-being, ensuring everyone stays healthy. That's right, Betty. Doctors also perform surgeries, mend broken bones, and prescribe medicines to alleviate pain and suffering. They really make a difference in people's lives, don't they? Do you think my teacher makes a difference too? Absolutely. They're the ones who help young minds grow and discover their potential. How do teachers make such a big difference, Freddy? 
Well, Betty, teachers help us learn not only facts, but also how to think, explore, and solve problems. They ignite our curiosity and guide us through the world of knowledge. So, they're like the compasses of our education, pointing us in the right direction. Exactly. Teachers create a safe and nurturing environment where we can make mistakes and learn from them. They inspire us to dream big and believe in ourselves. Hmm. Well, what are some other jobs? Well, we could talk about construction workers. They're the builders of our world. They create everything from houses, bridges, roads, making sure they're safe and strong. So they're the creators of our environment, building structures for everyone to use. Exactly, Betty. Construction workers follow plans and use various tools and materials to turn ideas into reality. They make sure everything is sturdy and secure. It's like they shape our surroundings, creating places for people to live and work. Freddy, I'm really enjoying learning about these different careers. Are there more you can tell me about? Of course, Betty. There's so many exciting careers out there. How about we talk about chefs? Chefs, what do they do? Well, a chef's job is to create delicious meals by combining ingredients in a unique and flavorful way. They experiment with different flavors and techniques to make food that brings joy to people's taste buds. And there's different ways to cook things. My favorite is French cuisine. It's so yummy. So they're like the creators of tasty masterpieces that make people happy. Yeah, chefs work in restaurants, hotels, and even have their own signature dishes. They have a passion for food and enjoy making every meal memorable. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it, Freddy. So that person in the restaurant that brings food to my table, is that a job? Oh yeah, that person's called a server. It's often an entry-level job in the restaurant industry. They take your order, bring the delicious dishes that chefs prepare, and make sure you have a wonderful dining experience. Hmm, entry-level job? What does that mean, Freddy? An entry-level job is a position that doesn't require much prior experience or specialized skills. It's a starting point in your career, where you learn basics and gain valuable experience. There are entry-level jobs in various fields. For instance, you can also explore jobs like receptionists, customer service representatives, or cleaners. These positions help you develop essential skills and knowledge that can open doors to more advanced careers. Well, I think I've made up my mind. Really? What career have you chosen? None of them. What? How will you make money? You know, money doesn't just fall from the sky. Well, that was an unusual exception. Well, Freddy, I'm a kid. I shouldn't have to worry about that sort of thing. I'm just going to enjoy the moment that I'm in, here with you. Aw, oh, Betty, you're such a good friend. Aw, uh, and you're a great friend too, Freddy. Hey, let's quickly pick up this money that rained on us before anyone sees, and we could buy some candy. Great idea! Uh-oh, I dropped Sheila's pizza on the floor. Papa Pia, just out of curiosity, when was this floor last mopped? I don't know, Tweaky Boy. It's not my job. Hmm, Sheila said she's trying to add fiber to her diet. I'm sure it's fine. There, good as new. Order up. I hope everything is to your liking. Looks delicious. Maybe after you're done eating, I could get a little help in the kitchen. Nonsense. We will be here evaluating your cooking skills. Tweaky boy, 
That kitchen isn't gonna clean itself. Don't forget, you're the dishwasher too. Oh boy, working is hard. I'm exhausted already. Hello, I am. <laughs> but you can call me Alan. In the vast expanse of outer space, an intricate symphony of celestial elements unfolds, each with its unique role and significance, shaping the grand cosmic narrative. Let's embark on a journey through our solar system, commencing with the innermost planets. In order of their proximity to the sun, these terrestrial bodies are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Each of these planets possesses a distinct atmosphere. Mercury, being closest to the sun, has an extremely thin exosphere, where atoms and ions sporadically exist, making it totally uninhabitable. It's so hot, I can barely breathe on this planet. Venus, on the other hand, hosts a dense and scorching atmosphere, primarily composed of carbon dioxide with thick clouds and sulfuric acid, which means acid rain. Yeah, no thanks. Earth's atmosphere, a unique blend of nitrogen, oxygen, and trace gases, nurtures life as we know it. Ah, it's so perfect. It's no wonder you humans live here. I'm like totally jealous. Mars, known for its thin atmosphere, predominantly comprises of carbon dioxide with an atmosphere too thin to sustain liquid water, but it occasionally hosts dust storms and water ice clouds. <clears throat> Did you know scientists actually discovered life on Mars? Well, it was microscopic life, but life is life. As we traverse our solar system, we encounter not only eight major planets, but also a variety of dwarf planets, such as Pluto. It's so cute, residing on the outermost rim, adding further diversity to our celestial neighborhood. Don't forget about moons. Like Earth's moon, they're instrumental in maintaining the balance and stability of their parent planets, influencing everything from tidal patterns to planetary rotation. And Earth's moon is so beautiful. Continuing our cosmic voyage, we arrive at the four outer giants. These gas giants boast their own collections of moons and rings. Jupiter's atmosphere is predominantly hydrogen and helium, concealing raging storms, including the famous Great Red Spot. Hmm, looks like a great big planetary pimple. Saturn, recognized for its iconic ring system, features an atmosphere rich in hydrogen and helium with traces of methane. Uranus and Neptune, the ice giants, have atmospheres dominated by hydrogen, helium, and methane. But they're also renowned for their strikingly blue and stormy appearances. The asteroid belt, a region teeming with rocky debris, situated between Mars and Jupiter. It's theorized that this vast expanse could have once been home to a planet, now fragmented into countless asteroids. This hypothetical world, often referred to as the fifth terrestrial planet, offers a fascinating glimpse into the dynamic history of our solar system. Amidst the planetary and dwarf planetary orbits, we cross paths with the enigmatic and sometimes erratic nature of asteroids. An asteroid, in case you didn't know, is pretty much any rock floating in space. Some scientists have theorized that some asteroids may contain life and may have been the catalyst to distributing life to other planets. The most famous asteroid is the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Scientists believe that this asteroid hit the Gulf of Mexico where they have collected samples of asteroid dust. Shining like celestial beacons in the eternal night, stars radiate their brilliance, serving as the very engines of the cosmos. Stars give life to galaxies, responsible for the synthesis of elements through nuclear fusion. Did you know that 
when our sun formed, the pieces that were left behind formed into planets, which then in turn brought about life. All life on Earth is pretty much made of stardust. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And when you think of how many planets are out there in the universe, there must be life other than Earth. I mean, look at me. I'm an alien. I'm not going to tell you where I came from, though. That's a secret. In the grand mosaic of the cosmos, each celestial element, each celestial body, each moon, and each ring system plays its unique role. It's a reminder that every individual, no matter how small, has a purpose in the grand scheme of existence. We all have a place in the universe, contributing to its infinite wonder. As we look up into the night sky, we're reminded that our interconnectedness across the vastness of space is what makes the cosmos truly awe-inspiring. How is everything? Are you enjoying your dining experience? This bird seed is exquisite, and the salt is amazing. Is this the regular salt or sea salt? It's neither. It's seasoning salt. <laughs> Fantastic! Give this man a raise. You got it, Twinkie boy. Here's your first paycheck. I'll see you at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning to make the pizza dough. Well, how lucky am I to have a job that starts at the crack of dawn? I'll be here. Come on, Sheila, Birdman. Let's go pay our mortgage. This is great. Our mortgage is paid for another month. And all I have to do is work myself to the bone every day. All day. Every day. Oh, Twinkie boy, keeping a roof over our heads. My hero. Yes. Very responsible of you, Twinkie boy. And only 40 more years until our mortgage is paid off. I know we can count on you. Anything for my best pal and best gal. Well, it's 5 p.m. I better be getting to bed. I have to get up soon for work. <laughs> <laughs>